What's up, movie crew? Welcome to the latest Let's Watch. Before I get started, if you're new to this channel, my name is Luke, this is Let's Watch a Movie, and if you're in anything cinema and physical media related, you've gone to the right place, so hit that subscribe button. Today, I am seeing the Marvels. And... I am feeling very indifferent towards seeing this movie today. So when Captain Marvel first came out, that was the last big movie before Endgame. And I was pretty hyped for it. Brie Larson's a great actress, very hyped for it. I enjoyed it when I saw it in theaters. Second time around is a different story. And I recently rewatched it getting ready for today and my thoughts are the same as it was with the second time around on top of that these last few marvel movies have not been that great i enjoyed wakanda forever guardians of the galaxy 3 wasn't bad but i don't think it was as good as everyone else said it was and everything else has been kind of eh so i am really hoping this movie doesn't suck but I'm going to go in here, go see this movie, and come back and give you my thoughts on the Marvels. All right, so today's a new day. I had recorded my initial thoughts after I saw the movie, but there was a giant glare and all you see is sunshine for about two and a half minutes. So, after seeing the Marvels, my overall thoughts are this. I personally thought it was a fun movie. It's definitely one of the better post-Endgame movies, in my opinion. It's not Guardians 3 or No Way Home, but it's a lot better than Black Widow. It's better than Eternals. It's better than a lot of the other stuff. So, the things I liked in this movie... I've got to give a huge shout out to, I apologize, I'm not trying to butcher the name, but I know I might, Aman Vellani, who plays Kamala Khan, had the standout role in this movie. Now, I like everyone else in the movie, don't get me wrong, but I felt like she was able to show a lot more range. So you've got the part where she first meets Captain Marvel, so she's doing the fangirl thing. But... Again, a reminder, in the show, she's still in high school, so you've still got the whole her being a teenager and her having the whole still being there with her family. And then you've got having to fight the aliens to save the world. So I felt like out of everyone, she was the one that had the most range, and she got to do a little bit more. I don't think there were any flat performances, nothing against the villain, but we'll get to that in, in the con section later. Another pro, if you've seen the trailers and you know there's that whole switcheroo thing, and both times when you see like a major like switcheroo thing going on, both of those were really good. The one where they don't know what's going on is a really good fight scene, but also it has some humor. And then there's another one later on, once they kind of get their crap straight, and it's really good. And, for those that are new to the channel, I constantly complain about movies being too long. Hallelujah, Marvel finally listened. This movie is an hour and 45 minutes, and I like that. Thank you, Kevin Feige, for finally giving us a shorter movie. And shout out to Nia DaCosta, the director, because I know that she also mentioned that she was trying to make something less than two hours. Praise both of you on that one. All right. As far as the cons go on this one, I... Marvel. 
I never want to see another sky beam in any of your movies ever again. It has been overplayed. Y'all created a troop, and now it is overdone because of you. We don't need any more. No more sky beams. The other issue is that there, the biggest complaints that people usually have with Marvel movies are very present here. One, some of the tropes that you get are in here again. Another issue, nothing against the actress, but the villain was very much a cut and paste throwaway villain and you don't feel like they're ever going to be in danger. Another personal complaint of mine, All right, with Ms. Marvel, she's trying to save Jersey City. In Spider-Man, Peter Parker's trying to save New York. Why is it that every movie has to be, the world is in danger, but we don't have the Avengers? That is getting overplayed. You can have smaller scale stuff. Save the world saving for Avengers movies, for major crossovers. Because when you do something like that in every single movie, once you get to the big event movies like Avengers, it doesn't feel like an event movie. It doesn't feel special. That's just my personal thoughts on it. And yes, Marvel can do something a little more street-based. They could have done something space-based without it necessarily being the fate of the world. And for those who are wondering, one post credit scene, there's another thing at the end of the credits. You don't really need to stay for that. The actual mid credit scene though, so good. One of the better ones and it has me excited for the next movie. Final thoughts. I'm gonna give the Marvels a three and a half out of five. While I personally enjoyed it, I can fully understand why there are people out there that hate this movie. And that's gonna do it for this one. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. You like what you see? Leave a thumbs up. Comment down below. Do you plan to see the Marvels? And if so, what are your thoughts? But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.